Okay, on um, June 13th, 2024, um, I received three dreams in order. Um, I recorded the first one at 1.49 a.m. on my phone, so that is what you're going to be listening to, and I'll start that one now. We were on this, like, not even like a motor scooter. I don't know, it was some type of scooter, a little fella or something. And we were like, and Philip was like on a cool little, little road, like sidewalk road, like a beach resort or something. I don't know. And we were going like away from the little town or neighborhood. And then. Someone came up or was coming, so we did a U-turn because we got a bad feeling about him. And he was on the same type of little scooter or something, like little, I don't know, whatever it was, motorized thing. And he was trying to catch up to us. It just felt weird, like they were on bikes, like like actual pedal bikes. Um, I think there was another guy with him. And um, we turned around and we kept trying to go like quicker to get away from them because I had this feeling that the, the bigger guy, like the taller guy, was like no good. Like he wanted just destruction and like to destroy us and kill us. Like there was just like deception in him. Um, he wanted to like take you off and like hurt you or get you away from others and hurt you or something. And so we came up on these, like, there was like storefronts and we came up on the first one. For some reason there was a barricade in front of it, like something. So I like um, pushed it back a little bit so we could squeeze through. And then um, we stepped up like three steps, like wooden steps or something. And then it was like a, a rundown like beach, like withered, weathered gray, like little store or something. I don't know. And I opened the door and we came through and we just started saying, there's like, there's like someone coming or whatever. And the manager just walked to it and I locked the door with a little lock on top. Like just one of those little slide locks like you do, like a old things and um, no one will come in or whatever. And I was talking to another um, sales clerk or something there. And then um, they came to the glass windows, just like they knew where we were. And they came to the glass windows and first it was the tall guy. And then the other guy, he had like long blonde hair, a little bit like beachy or something. He was holding his bike and he was like, I just want to. Okay, sorry, I hit the wrong button. Holding his bike and he was like, I just wanted to find. Oh, what was he saying? I don't remember what he was saying. I just wanted to find the girl that I, I met when I was eight years old. Like on my bike, like I just, I just want to find like that girl that I met when I was younger, like on my bike, like, and he was like really hurt that we, like, I just got scared of thought badly of him or something. I don't know. And he was just looking for someone. So it made us feel bad and Peyton was like, oh, like he just, she just felt kind of bad. So, um and then store clerks or whatever. And I was still kind of like, I felt bad. But I was like, something's not right. Like, I don't get it. And then um, we went out to go like catch up with them. So we went out the front door and they were already kind of down a little further on the right, down the, the sidewalk. Um, so we got closer to them and it opened up to like a cul-de-sac, like where there's houses around, like a cul-de-sac. And a lot of people were coming out. And the guy that was looking for someone was walking up and talking to people at the houses. But the tall guy was standing in the cul-de-sac and it's almost like he had an extension of himself 
and it was um like he had a little pony for people to come up like kids to get drawn to or like kind of feels like babes in christ like you know to get drawn to um and come to him and so i went to like buy the pony and everyone was like mesmerized with this pony, like looking at it and petting it. And and I was watching the guy, the taller guy. And all of a sudden, he, um, his head shifted. Like, a, uh, he had, like, eyes, like he was, you know, like you're just looking at him. He's looking straight ahead, like looking at everyone. And then I was like looking and I thought I saw something on the back of his head. And then he turned like all the way around his head turned and his front face became his back. His back became his front because he had eyes on the back of his head too. And I was like, wait. And I was like, show me, show me. Like it's because I knew the deception. Like I had, I saw it, I saw the deception and um, he was mad because it felt like he was like alien, like not who he said he was, right? And um, he was, he got mad because I was um, exposing who he was to everyone and um, then something happened, like he reached out for me or something, and there was some kind of explosion, like, uh, like a, re, you know, uh, repercussion of what happened or whatever. There was some kind of explosion. Um, that's what it kind of reminds me of, like a, a repercussion or something that happened because he was exposed. And then, um, and then all of a sudden I saw, like, really close up, like I saw him sitting um, with that guy that was still looking for it, the person he was looking for, and um, they were like bandaging their wounds a little bit or something like that, and the taller guy was bandaging himself, but it was some kind of like mechanical box he was bandaging, um, like with black masking tape or something, with some kind of mechanical box or something. Um, yeah. So then, um, I looked at the Strong's time and, um, I'll put that out and then, um, um, okay, so then, um, I think Oh my goodness, my brain's not working right now. I think I got like second Peter two or something. I'll put that out, I forget which one. But um, I think it, it talks about um, like false prophets and things like that. And I was like, yeah, he was like, he was a false prophet and he was a false, um, he was false and he was bringing like the babes of Christ to him or something and he was leading them astray and that guy that I felt like had okay intentions he was fine um and he was just looking for someone was like getting led astray by this main guy that was actually in control of everything this taller guy um but like no one could see it and all these people were like coming to him to look at his pony, like flock to his pony, like the, you know, um, the, uh, like a worldly thing, like something that, um, that everyone would like that doesn't look harmful, you know, but then you're listening and, and everything, and everything sounds like candy and butterflies and wonderful when, um, it's all deception and, and his fault. And he's like taking people, he's trying to destroy them and take people down with them. Okay, so really quick before I give the second dream, I'm going to read um, 
2 Peter 2, but there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. And through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment, and spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly, and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overthrow, making them an ensample unto those that after should live ungodly, and delivered just Lot, vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked, For that righteous man dwelling among them in seeing and hearing vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. But chiefly them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanness and despise government presumptuous are they self-willed they are not afraid to speak evil of dignities whereas angels which are greater in power and might bring not railing accusations against them before the lord but these as natural brute beasts make made to be taken and destroyed speak evil of the things that they understand not and shall utterly perish in their own corruption, and shall receive the reward of unrighteousness as they that count it pleasure to riot in the daytime. Spots, they are, and blemishes, sporting themselves with their own deceivings while they feast with with you, having eyes full of adultery, and that cannot cease from sin, beguiling unstable souls and heart they have exercised with covetous covetous practices cursed children which have forsaken the right way and are gone astray following the way of balaam the son of bozar who loved the wages of unrighteousness but was rebuked for his iniquity the dumb ass speaking with man's voice forbade the madness of the prophet. These are wells without water, clouds that are carried with a tempest to whom the mist of darkness is reserved forever. For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they allure through the lust of the flesh, through much wantonness. Those that were clean escaped from them who live in error. While they promise them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption for of whom a man is overcome of the same is he brought in bondage for if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the lord and savior jesus christ they are again entangled therein and overcome the latter end is worse with them than the beginning For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. But it is happened unto them according to the true proverb. The dog is turned to his own vomit again and the sow that was washed to her wallowing in the mire.
like how I was walking in a city, like a town. Um, it wasn't like New York, like it was a major city or town, but it was a city, like wherever. I was just walking the grass, um, a grassy area outside. Um, and there was more people outside. And I think I was walking with my husband. And we started noticing things in the sky. And it was showing up like fireworks, but um, like little like um, dots of light in the sky. And they would show up like five at a time, looking like a circle. Like one, two, three, four, five. And then they disappear a little bit. And then one, two, three, four, five. They're about like 20 feet above your head or something. And um, I realized, you know, those are bullets. There's bullets were getting shot at, like, but I didn't, they weren't hitting me and my husband yet. Like, the, I think they were hitting other people. <laughs> and then, um, so we started to run, like, like, walk fast, trying to figure out where to go and run. And, um, then all of a sudden, like, everyone was scattering places or whatever. And then all of a sudden, there was this, like, you heard, like, and uh, like a missile or something landed and um, I could see like above me too or something so I fell to my stomach <coughs> and I think I had on a skirt um, and I fell to my stomach and I thought the uh, wind from this bomb that just went off or something is going to, because it was at my feet, it was like behind me, um, it's going to, I'm going to feel it come up and then um, like the, he, I don't know. So I felt the wind come up, start from my feet and all the way up over my head and like debris, you know, and things like that. And then I could see like the light go you know, and then I felt the heat, like, and then it started burning my, like, back of my legs and my back, like, I was like, ah, uh, because it started burning my skin, like, bubbling it, and then I walked to this street, like, I got up, and I walked to the street, and that's how I walked, and I walked across the street, and there was a group of people um, being led off, like they were walking, and in back of them were, um, people with guns, like military, people with guns, and they weren't from our country, and I knew we had been invaded, and they had taken over, <coughs> And um, I had gotten pushed in with this crowd. And it was like they were everywhere. You didn't know where to go. Um, and then they took us to this building. And it was a woman that had a gun then. And another woman talking to her. And... Um, she like liked her job. She didn't care. She just liked her job. <coughs> and they had you lined up in rows. And she would load her gun, and then she would shoot like the like the first or like all the people she could or whatever. And they'd fall and die. And then she was talking to the woman next to her. And. Um, mm -hmm. I was, for some reason, I was walking around them, so I could hear. I was, like, walking around them. <coughs> um, and she was like, yeah, these bullets, and they were kind of, like, long, like, long gold or something bullets. And um, they looked, like, four inches, three inches long or something. Four, no, four inches. I don't know. They were long, like, thinner, but they went into her again. She goes, yeah, these 
bullets are at, they, they do a lot of damage. Like, they really mess them up. Um, and she was, like, excited about that or happy about that or something. And then, um... I was thinking, oh, God. Oh, Jesus. Like, I, oh. Because I knew I was about to get shot. <coughs> in, the, in the gut. And, um, then all of a sudden, my husband woke up. And he was like, um, okay. Uh, like, he was the next lineup. Like, some of the men, or fathers or something, the men... <clears throat> and um, he was like, okay, um, he told me real quick, go, and you know where I bought this before, or you know where the store is, or I bought this before, turn left there and keep going, like, go, right, or something like that, and I was like, huh, huh, and he like, tried, I think trying to hand me something or something, <clears throat> and um, he told the woman, like, um, no, no, they have, they have to get out, they have to get out of here, they have to go, and, um, get this item, or something like that, they have to go, they have to go, and she was like, okay, and we only had a certain amount of time, because, for some reason, because, um, I don't know why, but, like, we weren't gonna stand in there while the husband got shot or something like that. Like, we were able to walk out or something. Um, really weird. I know. And then, um, my daughter and I, um, walk out <coughs> really quick. And, um, Okay, so the thing that I think that my husband handed me was like papers. It was like a paper, like um, maybe a credential that I needed um, to get through or to go. Okay, and um, um, before we left, something else happened. I think I'm going to explain it next. We started walking and heading, trying to find this area, like walking past people and um, like we were going where he told us to turn left to keep going and trying to figure it out. And then all of a sudden we ended up in the car and I think I was in the passenger seat. Someone was in the driving, some other woman, some other woman was driving and my daughter was in the back or something. And, um, I mean, my daughter wasn't there. I don't know. Some other woman was driving and I was in the passenger seat. No, she was there. Oh. And um, we were coming up on checkpoints. There was like a man in these towers. Um, and there were checkpoints. Okay. And we had already passed by a whole bunch of people, like in uniforms and um, one by the building that was checking people, like, I don't know, one man. But we were coming up on this checkpoint. And I was like, no, no, go around. you got to stop. Like, don't stop in front of it. Go to the side of it and stop. And there was, like, a whole bunch of men, like, walking around, like, looking at things. And <laughs> the person inside the tower. And um, they, we had to pop the trunk. And I think we were hiding something in the back. Like we, I don't know, we just didn't want to get found out who we were. That we were trying to escape. Okay. And then, um, and then, um, they looked in the trunk and they saw like our baggage or something like that. And they were like, what's this? What's this? And we're like, hmm? And then it was just items. I don't remember what the items were, but we were like, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, that's giveaways. We, we forgot we were going to give them away. And so they took them. And then um, 
they told us we could keep going, like go. But <coughs> before that, there was a guy that um, was like maybe a, like a non general, but like a over that group or something. And um, he walked out of the tower, and in front of us, there was two children. And they were, like, dressed up in clothing, like some of the clothing that wasn't theirs. And some man was standing behind them. And the guy came and, like, started messing with them, thinking they were, like, faker dolls. And they, like, kind of moved and, like, giggled, like, oh, ha, 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 you know. And they, um, it was, he was like, you shouldn't be wearing that or something. And it wasn't their clothing. It was, like, maybe the people... Like they owned the nation now, like the, like it was people's clothing that used to be there, or, and they were kind of making fun of it or something, fun of them. I don't know. I'm sorry. Before I got to in the car and to the choke point, as we we're walking, we we're walking through these like areas, <clears throat> through town, like through the city, like um, through these areas all of a sudden you saw like things dim. Like, like for some reason, I don't know, it was like the, the power like dimmed and came back on. And you knew that the the dads had just been executed or that line of people with that had my husband in it had just been executed. <clears throat> Even though it was by bullets, I don't know, but it, it dimmed and came back up. Oh, and I forgot a major part. Um, <clears throat> when I was saying goodbye to my husband before we walk, we were able to walk out. Um, it's like we were hugging, like really tight, and it was so real because I could smell like, like we had been like sweaty and dirty for a long time, like it, you know, or not that long, but a long time, and like you know you. You know, it's kind of gross, but you smell armpits and things like that. Um, I could, like, smell everything. Like, like, it was so real. And I was hugging him. And I was like, oh, please, please, please believe in Jesus. Please believe in Jesus so you go to heaven with me. Please believe in Jesus. <clears throat> I was like, you just got to believe, just believe in Jesus. Um, and then I told him, I said, I wish I was going first. <clears throat> so I wouldn't be alone and in pain. I wouldn't be in pain dying alone. Like, that he would be there. Even if he had to watch me, like, that he would be there. And I walked out. Okay, so at the checkpoint, we drove away. And somehow, we ended up somewhere else. I I remember um, we were in another city. And <coughs> at one point, I remember <coughs> we were walking over a bridge on a bridge. And... Um, this boy fell in front of us off of a bike and there was just people like spending the sunny days, like the, you know, going about their day. And, um, uh, we just couldn't be found out. Like we lived like for a little while, we just lived like we couldn't be found out. <clears throat> we couldn't let people know, like really like where, who we were and where we were from and things like that. So we were trying to live, just hiding out, but living. And then um, all of a sudden, it was like, <clears throat> it was just a sunny day and we were walking and we, I passed the same man that was guarding that building, like the same military person. 
that was guarding that building. Um, that everybody, you know, got executed in. And <clears throat> he was talking to some other people, just kind of casually talking, because, like, years have gone by or something, just casually talking to some other people. And, um, <clears throat> um, or a year or something, something had gone by. It had been a year or two or something. And he kind of looked at me. Like maybe he recognized me. And I was like, oh. And I walked a little faster. And then what was weird is that as I was walking, there was other people that I hadn't been around yet coming out from the crowd. Like they were sitting different places outside, park benches and, and things like that. And um, <clears throat> so walking and they all started like gathering around me, like drawn, like we were drawn together. They were gathering around me and um, I knew that they were like me. One, I knew they were like Christian, but two, I just knew that they were we were all trying to survive, like, but there was something, we had something going on, there was some kind of purpose, there was something, <clears throat> and so we started walking, like, in this group, um, without trying to be seen, but, like, in this group that we were all going, like, the same direction, and, um, we turned, like, left, and went into this like it opened up and you could see, you could see like in this build, like we walked in this building and it had, um, it was like they took parts of our land or it was like an area and land, they put a building there and then they broke it off and put it behind glass and you can walk through it. Like if you're in a museum or something, you can walk through it and, um, <clears throat> It was our land, like before they had changed things or came and did whatever, took it over, but it was our land. And I was like, oh, because my daughter wasn't with me for some reason. And I was like, my daughter would love to see this <clears throat> because the land that used to be desert was blooming. And it had, for some reason, it had lavender. I remember seeing the purple flowers, like green, like lavender, just like sprouted in big spots, like everywhere. And it was just like flourishing. The land was flourishing in those places. So it wasn't like dry and desolate anymore. It was like flourishing. Um, and what was really weird is that some of the the areas that you looked in, like behind the glass, had white horses. Like they kind of reminded me of unicorns or whatever, but white horses in them. And, the, and some of them, they were painted or with swirls, but I knew they were white horses, but they were like dyed or had colors like in them or on them of like rainbows or like rainbow colors or just colors. Like, I don't know. Um, and we were walking through And then um, I knew that guy was trying to catch up with me to figure out who I was. And um, I was going to a, a back exit door. And this, one of the guys in the group was like, he's looking for you, or I hear it, and he's looking for or whatever, and I looked, and he had passed that building that we were just in, and I was like, shh, there he is, like, he's coming back, because he recognized me, or something, um, and then I think I woke up, that's when I woke up, now the feeling was not America. Um, 
like Germany or UK or something. And when I say I was wearing a skirt, it was like a a longer, like maybe tan skirt, like to the uh, below the knees, and then I was wearing some kind of like um, loafer shoe that tied in front, and some, my socks were like I had socks on; they were bent over, like little ankle socks that were bent over, and I had like a blouse on. It kind of reminded me of something that they'd wear, like, around World War II or something, you know, or I don't know, like, in, I don't know, it kind of reminded me, it felt like, um, yeah, like, UK, like, 40s and 50s or something like that, and then, um, but, like, nowadays, like, what would, what's going to happen, but, like, how it, how would it happen then, like now or something? And it had the feeling of, um, it had the feeling of, um, like the people, like, were like, like Germany, like Hitler, like the people at the stations were like Russian people like that or Germany or Hitler or something. It had the feeling of Holocaust. It just had the feeling of all that, like world wars and Holocaust and um, God and Jesus and Jews and people and those just trying to survive. I don't know. It was just, it just had that feeling of that's how it was. And then I woke up and I was going to make this recording and on my phone, my Google feed that I never look at again, like my phone was restarting and it threw me to the page that has like, when you swipe left on your phone, I never do that because I always forget it does that. And then it has news that you could already read on it like already google like little images or something i don't know i don't even know what to call it um it's all about like the northern lights the devil comet um two huge asteroids that a new one a star exploding and creating a new something um devil comet making two tails um uh jimmy carter things um and his health um oh and uh b-52s which is all really weird because I've had dreams about all of those. I've gotten gotten words, prophetic words about all that, like all, all that. Um, and it was all on my feed and everything is like happening. Like all of those things, there's something happening this week with them or today or yes, or, you know, and or the next day or whatever. Okay, really quick, I'm going to read some verses that I got also Tuesday at 7.58 a.m. Okay, after I read these, I'll give the third dream. Okay, so Tuesday, 7.58 a.m., I got Daniel 11. I'm going to let you read that, um, Daniel chapter 11. But I also got Matthew chapter 2, verses 17 through 18. So I'm going to read that really quick for you. 
Then was fulfilled that which was spoken by Jeremy the prophet, saying, In Ramah was there a voice heard, lamentation, and weeping, and great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children, and would not be comforted, because they are not. Okay, Wednesday at um, 12.12, I got Acts 28, verses 25 through 31. I'm going to read that really quick. Um, and when they agreed not among themselves, they departed after that. Paul had spoken one word. Well spake the Holy Ghost by Esaias the prophet unto our fathers, saying, Go unto this people and say, Hearing ye shall hear and shall not understand, and seeing ye shall see and not perceive. For the heart of this people is waxed gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes have they closed, lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and should be converted and I should heal them. Be it known therefore unto you that the salvation of God is sent unto the Gentiles and that they will hear it. And when he had said these words, the Jews departed and had great reasoning among themselves. And Paul dwelt two whole years in his own hired house, and received all that came in unto him, preaching the kingdom of God and teaching those things which concern the Lord Jesus Christ with all confidence, no man forbidding him. Okay, then I also got on Wednesday at 1212 Romans chapters 1 and chapter 2. Um, I might do a video on that one. Um, go and read that. And then Thursday at 5.30 a.m., I got John chapters 8 and 9 and John chapter 5, verses 8 through 9. So I'm going to go to the John chapter 5 and read that one really quickly. And then you can read the John chapters 8 and 9. Please go read these. Okay, John 5, 8 through 9 is. Jesus saith unto him, Rise, take up thy bed, and walk. And immediately the man was made whole, and took up his bed, and walked. And on the same day was the Sabbath. Okay, and that is our intro to dream three, because it deals with that. Okay, last dream, third dream. Um, it's a lot quicker, um, because I only remember a piece of it. Um, okay, I was in a hotel. And um, it's like I am now, so like now. It would be happening now. And um, I was walking down the hallway and the doors were open for some reason. And I looked into one hotel room and um, I knew it was summertime. So I knew it was like now. And in the hotel room, there was a band. Um, and so there was some people sitting on the bed and the lead singer was standing up looking and talking to his like lead guitarist or lead, you know, um, lead guitarist or something in a chair. And, um, I don't recognize the band. Okay. But I walked into the hotel room and, um, was just listening to them talk. And it was an old, like metal band, like rock band. And, um, they were getting ready to go on and perform, that um, evening, um, I had a feeling it was like at, like a, I don't know, like um, there's there's venues called like Jiffy Loop Live, um, like in Virginia, and um, they do concerts throughout the summer. Okay, um, I haven't looked at their lineup, but it it was just an old rock band. And, um, they had longer hair and still the clothing and, um, the really quick, the, the lead singer walked out of the room 
and they were getting to perform and are, you know, getting ready to perform that, that evening. And the lead guitarist was still sitting in the chair and I was looking at him and the people were still sitting on the bed and, um, his, his body was worn out. Um, just like abuse over the years, abuse of, um, the lifestyle, lifestyle abuse, um, of what he was living and you could see it all over him and he was worn out, um, and he was hurting and his, um, back was like really hurting him. It was like, it was like hunched over and, um, you could just see the abuse, like his body. It was just like, um, hurting to his marrow, like his bones. It was just his, he just, okay. So, um, he was hurting and I just walked up to him and I pulled him forward in his seat. So he slumped forward a little bit and I threw my hands on his back. Like I didn't, I didn't know him and he didn't ask, you know, but I put my hands, not through him, but I put my hands on his back and I said, um, be healed in the name of Jesus be healed in the name of Jesus. And then all of a sudden, all his bones and his spine and everything started like moving like water underneath my, like, like you could feel every bone repositioning and moving and twisting and repositioning and the spine and everything lining up. Um, and I was like, be whole in the name of Jesus. And his back lined up straight and, um, the way that it was meant to be. And he was healed and he stood up like a, like a believer, like a new man, like a, um, like a believer, like he, he believed and he was just a new creation in the Lord. Okay. I didn't plan on reading this, but I feel like I need to read this. So I'm going to put Proverbs three, um, so you can read it on your time or you can listen. Wisdom bestows well-being. My son, um, for this I'm reading in the NIV version, okay? My son, do not forget my teaching, but keep my commands in your heart, for they will prolong your life many years and bring you peace and prosperity. Let love and faithfulness never leave you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Then you will win favor and a good name in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him and he will make your path straight. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and shun evil. This will bring health to your body and nourishment to your bones. Honor the Lord with your wealth and the first fruits of all your crops. Then your barns will be filled to overflowing and your vast will brim over with new wine. My son, do not despise the Lord's discipline and do not resent his rebuke because the Lord disciplines those he loves as a father, the son he delights in. Blessed are those who find wisdom, those who gain understanding. For she is more profitable than silver and yields better return than gold. She is more precious than rubies. Nothing you desire can compare with her. Long life is in her right hand, and in her left hand are riches and honor. Her ways are pleasant ways, and all her paths are peace. She is a tree of life to those who take hold of her. Those who hold her fast will be blessed. By wisdom, the Lord laid the earth's foundations. By understanding, he set the heavens in place. By his knowledge, the watery depths are divided, were divided, and the clouds let drop the dew. My son, do not let wisdom and understanding out of your sight. Preserve sound judgment and discretion. They will be life for you, an ornament to grace your neck. Then you will go on your way in safety, and your foot will not stumble. When you lie down, you will not be afraid. When you lie down, your sleep will be sweet. 
have no fear of sudden disaster or of the ruin that overtakes the wicked for the Lord will be at your side and will keep your foot from being snared. Do not withhold good from those to whom it is due when it is in your power to act. Do not say to your neighbor, come back tomorrow and I'll give it to you when you already have it with you. Do not plot harm against your neighbor who lives trustfully near you. Do not accuse anyone for no reason when they have done you no harm. Do not envy the violent or choose any of their ways. For the Lord detests the perverse, but takes the upright into his confidence. The Lord's curse is on the house of the wicked, but he blesses the home of the righteous. He mocks proud mockers, but shows favor to the humble and oppressed. The wise inherit honor, but fools get only shame.